that anybody born again must know that the look at this now must know that the Messiah is coming and must always be ready whether you are driving on the autopista or the highway or you are in the shopping mall or you are cooking at home or you are asleep or whatever it is you are doing in the office you must always be cognizant of the fact that the Messiah can come any second any minute now does it mean now you go to hell because you get found you in the office not at all eternity is not a joke right this is now what he's talking about thank you for shutting down your microphone my daughter this is now what he's talking about this is the power of preparedness this is why we are going all over the world to prepare the church before that day this one here because those that will be enlightened the countries like venezuela where we came from now now they are aware, he says, but you brothers and sisters are now not in darkness, you are enlightened. So that that day should not surprise you like a thief. So the result should be different, right? Yes. That's all he's saying here. That the result must be different when you prepare. That today when you walk through the airports, you find machines, remove your jacket, remove your watch, and put in this tray, remove your bag, open today and open my bag. I opened my, my briefcase in uh, which one, uh, what was that? Sao Paulo, I think. Sao Paulo. They, thank God I was standing there because they always carry my bags. They say, open the briefcase. They were looking into it. I said, is it this briefcase? No. Is it this? They said, no. It's okay. Just close it and go. But that was very powerful, meaning nothing will escape. And the result is different. Now we can have safe flights. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yes. The power of preparedness. Many things devastate mankind. Why? Because of lack of preparedness. Things they would have really avoided. Totally avoided. That's what he's saying here. That if we prepare well, that day will not devastate you. Look at this now. That the result will be different. If we don't prepare, it will be totally different result. Even by numbers. That's why we're going all over the world that Jesus may win. That the victory at the cross may be increased, magnified when the whole world is prepared for that day. The reason for which he died, right? Yes. But if we don't go around the world, people live no more Christian lives, no mixed with sin, and then die in sin, and all that happens, and fail to glorify Jesus on that day. Are we together? Yes. So, this is serious. The reason I come to you tonight. At about 1 a.m. approximately, uh, from midnight 20, midnight 40, is because there is power in preparedness. Amen. That I have come today to announce to you that I have seen the glorious coming of the Messiah. Amen. And the Lord has sent me to all the nations, including Dubai, here, to tell you that without holiness, nobody will enter the kingdom of God. Amen. And that that day and hour is not known. That if you prepare well, you will not be put to shame. Oh, how powerful an instruction that is said that even if I go, even if I leave now, even if I now leave, you have it. You remember that now we were told to prepare anytime, whether in office, or in the streets, or in the shop, in the mall, or in the office, I mean at home, just to be ready. Day and hour not known. That these devastations you see happening can be avoided can be avoided. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why I have come here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That you may prepare for the coming of the Messiah and not be put to shame and bring glory to him that died for you. Amen. Now look at this now. If you now go back, and that's why again now, look, he's saying that Christians are not in darkness. Look at that. Not in darkness. Ay, ay, ay. But when you look at the church globally, why am I going globally? Because the church is in darkness. The church of Christ is in darkness. They are living as though the Messiah is not coming back anymore. Look at this now. I'm, just, I'm saying, you simply look at the lifestyle of the Christian. No. They, they're not in a hurry. They're not panicked. They are mixed with sin and they don't even seem to care about it. So they're living as though he is not coming back anymore. Why are you living like that? No, my work is too busy. Aye. So the profession has taken over now. 
That is more centered on profession, career, than the coming of the Messiah. And yet we know that there is something called what? Eternity. Do you know that eternity has no end? So if you end up in the lake of fire, then you are there eternally. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 3. Let somebody be there constantly, not move. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 3 says the following. Everybody reading with me? There's a big screen here. So now we are going to pay for this hall today. You just prepare so we can swipe the card here for the two weekends and then we will continue sending the money now because the worship will be here and everything. We want to establish a church here. And then, and then we now can move on. If it moves to another joint, a bigger place, another church continues here. Amen. Hallelujah. Until, until I do the healing service here, Ecclesiastes 11.3 He says the following Look at that now He says 